what happens when a narcissist goes to therapy? Have you had a narcissist decide to go to therapy? Have they been forced to go to therapy? Have you convinced them to go to therapy? What happens when that narcissistic person gets help from a therapist? First of all, why did they go to this therapist? What are they looking for? And what was the purpose behind it? That'll give you an indication sort of of how this what might play out. So say you have a narcissist who you have left them and they go to therapy to get help for the things they do that they are claiming accountability for. They are going to use that therapist very quickly to turn things around and either become a victim so that everyone feels sorry for them and then they, you know, they make excuses for the behaviors that they had because of their victimhood, or they're going to gain information from that therapist to then turn everything that they did and then project it onto you as something you did, or they'll stay in therapy just long enough to hoover you back. They'll hoover you back. They'll stay just long enough in therapy to get the attention from both you and the supply from both you and the therapist. And then they'll quickly revert to their ter terrible toxic behavior towards you. And meanwhile, they're manipulating the therapist the whole time. We're talking here more about individual therapy, therapy in couples therapy or family therapy with a narcissist is another story and another topic. And I've done a video on it, so I'll try to link that as well. But right now, let's just talk about when they go individually for therapy. So here's the thing. If they do stick with it, here are some examples of what may happen. They love the supply so much that they get from the therapist. That could be why they're sticking with it. They love being able to sit there and lie to the therapist about everything that happened in their life or tell half truths or they're using the same tactics. They're gaslighting, they're projecting, and they're using this person as a sounding board, as a um, uh, basically a person to gain supply from and, and, and manipulate that person to be on their side. Hopefully the therapist sees through it and is just sitting there and maintaining composure and doing the best they can with what the person in front of them that they're working with. Oftentimes, though, the more covert narcissists, the altruistic narcissists, the ones that are communal or the ones that are out there being, you know, the heroes, the do gooder narcissistic types will fully convince the narcissist uh, therapist, they will fully convince a therapist that they aren't the problem and they can go on for years and years like this so what are they gaining what is the problem with that so what so okay good then they're with the therapist that sounds like all right well at least there's something right well no because what they're learning is the psychological terms they're using manipulate they're learning to manipulate through psychological measures they're learning about themselves, so to speak, but they're not actually learning about themselves. They're not getting the same kind of self-awareness that allows for change. They're learning an awareness of how they are and what they do so that they then project that onto other people and force you to take accountability for their actions by gaslighting you, by making you the problem, by victimizing you instead of doing any healing in for themselves. So basically they're taking what they learn about self and projecting it onto you only, and they're taking the psychological terms that they use. And now they have a more refined language in which to manipulate from. They're gaining awareness um, of how they, when they interact with people, how it affects people so that they can refine their manipulation. And not only that, but they have an alibi. They have someone on their side that they can throw back at you in in any conversation or argument or, or any discussion that makes it so that you can't argue back. So not that the at therapist is actually doing this because you don't know what's actually being said in that therapist appointment. You only know what the narcissist said is being said. And so they will take the information information from the session and they'll say, well, my therapist says this. My therapist says you're da, da, da. my therapist says you need to blah, blah, blah. My therapist says it's because of the way you treat me that la la la, right? And you have no way of proving that that's true or not true. My therapist says I'm doing a really good job in making the changes I need in my life. And, and really other people around me need to need to respect my boundaries. Really? I don't think that's what's being said if the, if the therapist actually knows what's going on. So they're either lying about what the therapist says. They are uh, taking a half truth. And because yes, people do need to respect one another's boundaries, but that 
who knows if the therapist said, and you, my friend also need to, you know, who knows? We don't know. Uh, but the point is you don't know. So they can say anything they want and they've got somebody with letters behind their name backing them, even though that person doesn't, isn't actually backing them. Does that make sense? They can say, my therapist says, and you have nothing to go on. You have, it, it, it gives them a professional outlet for continuing the manipulation and someone saying that they're not wrong, you're wrong. But we don't know that they're actually saying that. They're probably not. Okay. So see, I'm trying. That's the other one. See, I'm trying. See, you see, I'm trying. At least I'm trying. So they'll go to therapy and they'll stick in therapy. Why? To prove themselves, to prove that they're the ones making the effort. A lot of female narcissists will do this. Well, they've often, well, first of all, they love the supply they get from the therapist and they love that they can just uh, manipulate someone in, in, into believing everything that they're saying, but at the same time, it shows they're trying. If, if you have left them, or if you're on the verge of leaving them, or if they know you are fed up with the relationship, they may pull this, see, I'm trying. It forces empathy out of you, right? It forces you to feel like a lot of things. It doesn't force you to, but it, in a relationship, it can, right? It can make you feel it can make the situation so that it inspires your hope. It attaches to that bit of hope. And when you're trauma bonded, the last thing you need is false hope. The thing is narcissists inherently don't believe they need to change. So they're not in therapy to change. They're in therapy to learn to change you. They're in therapy to pretend to change. They're in therapy to change the things people did to them. Right, they're not in, in they're not in therapy to take accountability for their own way of being and learn better, healthier skills at communication so that they aren't manipulating. Because without the manipulation, they couldn't get the supply, and their their whole life is about having the attention and the focus and the supply on them. So, another thing that can happen, and this is not just with therapy. Um, this can happen when a narcissist gets a hold of videos like these. <laughs> it can happen when narcissistic people get a hold of memes or quotes or magazine articles or anything that describes psychological relationship uh, difficulties or or psychologically psychological and relationship qualities. Or um, so, you know, you'll see a narcissist and on their Facebook page or somewhere, they'll post a meme and it'll be like, if someone truly loves you, blah, 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 blah. Or um, the key to a the key to a healthy relationship is blah, 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 blah. And it's all the stuff they never do. And you're sitting there going. What they're doing that, first of all, because they're saying, see, you can't do it, but I can I can recognize it. So they're pointing out. I can recognize what's healthy and that's what I do. It's everyone else who doesn't do it. Uh, and they can use those things. They can use videos. They can use the information they gain from articles, memes, quotes, all of it to, they sort of absorb it as if it's real for them and then project out onto other people why you're the problem, right? So they will, They'll use it to set a narrative, as I say all the time, to create a story about what's real. And in that story, you are the one causing the problem. And they use these bits of information and these memes and they use information from their therapist to attack, to manipulate, to prove themselves the victim to prove themselves the righteous one, all of that. If they decide to leave therapy, if they go to therapy and then they bail on it really quickly, they will say things like, it's usually because a therapist struck a nerve and they this is the type that absolutely will not take accountability, that will not look at themselves and they're not gonna look at themselves and project. What they're gonna do is get mad at it like a child and stomp their foot, right? And they're gonna leave the therapist's office saying, I'll never go back there. That person's an idiot. That person doesn't know what they're talking about. They're crazy. They must be a narcissist themselves. Or they'll, you know, therapy's, therapy's stupid. I don't believe in therapy. therapy they'll do all of this to, to close that door. So that if they do go, it's not good. If they don't, if they go and they leave really quick, same thing, right? Um, the, the thing is, they get empowered through therapy to believe they're the ones who are right. They have someone who is being paid to sit and listen. 
not only is it someone being paid to sit and listen, it is someone who is skilled at listening. It is someone who is trained at giving their focus and attention for an hour or however long the session is to another individual. And they are, they are just sitting there sucking the energy from that person. And at the same time, getting information from that person to empower themselves to be better manipulators. And that is it. If you have had in your life a narcissistic person go to therapy, what happened? Tell me about it in the comments, please. I'd love to hear it. Tell me, did it help? Did it hurt things? What, what happened afterwards? Share if you would like your story in the comments. My name is Lise Colucci. I am one of the life coaches at queenbeing.com. If you need any help or anything regarding coaching, check out the information in the main description of every video. And make sure you check out the information for the group coaching. It's a highly affordable way to get individual help on a weekly basis, multiple times a week. So check it out if you need it. Um, it's all in the main comment section. For now, I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to hit subscribe and the thumbs up and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye, take care.